This video is about the ambiguity and anomalies found in maps, whether they're in paper form, digital, Google, or Apple, it doesn't matter. The ambiguity is caused by how cities and roads evolve and how they have to either maintain numbers from a long time ago for street numbers or change them or whatever. So first thing we're going to do is look at two locations in the New York area. Yes, these have been brought up associated with a particular thing on the internet, a specific search for an image that's lost media, but they're not related in any way. I'll bring it up at the end of the video and it'll be in the title only as the address if you were looking for it. But let's bring up the two addresses. The first one is a physical location here, 1.35 miles away from the other address that's commonly associated with today's ambiguous subject matter. I'm going to be zooming in here if it will resolve. And we're showing the Howland Pump and Supply location that's been there since the mid-80s. I'm going to grab the Browse Street View Images thing, which doesn't really do that. It only brings up Google Street View. Plop it down here and wait for it to resolve. And it shows us Howland location. Now this has been around since the 80s. It is not a location associated with the lost media image that I'm not going to bring up right now. If you look up its location, because it's a highway, it's New York Highway 68, but it's also given a local name, and the address is 7665. But is it? The thing is, this is the address at either this location here, at this entrance, or is it at the other entrance? One of the things about running a business is you will sometimes use both addresses if you have a large enough location. One will be used, let's say, for the supply drop-off and for your shipping area, and the other one might be for the retail location. And then you might, for legal reasons, because it's a plot of land based on this pseudo address right in the middle, you might pick this location. Confusing? Yes. This isn't just something people create because they're trying to do a tax dodge or whatever. It's because this is the practical requirements that a building isn't necessarily at the address because the address refers to, and if you're not aware of it, this is rather important, a one square foot by one square foot location in front that you use an absolute location that's supposedly zero dimensional for where you put your mailbox. I'm not kidding, virtually every state uses that standard, which means the mailbox, if it's put across the street over here, because a lot of locations will do it, will mean that this is your address, even though it's a vacant freaking lot. Confused yet? Now, combine that with the computer age, and then worse, there are pseudo addresses, as I've brought up, that are between the locations where you might want to find it, or it might be needed. If we go one notch, you might have seen on the screen, it might have changed the numbers. How much it changes is done by either what it says on the mapping information and tax information for the area that Google has to work with, or <clears throat> uh, the, the algorithm is guessing, the AI routine can be wrong. That's why you'll end up with some things that are either slightly wrong or in another state. Sometimes when you'll be going along on the map, you'll go, oh, I'll go over here, and you're in Ohio. In fact, a large number of links at one time on Google Street View would jump to a specific vacant lot in Ohio. That actually was added to the Ohio mythology and memes. Let's try go back and going back to the overhead map. So we're out here at the Howland Pump and Supply. My uh, dimensions for checking distance are gone. We're about 1.3 miles away from the other location. But as you can see, it's just a building in, in the middle of a hunk of dirt. Now, if you look at the tax maps, Hey, it's got a Dollar General. Uh, if you look at the tax maps, you'll find out that it has addresses, plural, for a lot of locations. And it might even have a paper street, that'll become important in a minute, where it'll show a road that goes, let's say, parallel to this one. Maybe this was a road at one time. Or maybe it'll have this be a road, or it's a ditch. You never know until you look at the maps. And because city, county, and state, and federal government employees will misinterpret a road as a ditch or a ditch as a road, you'll end up with false streets. Let's zoom back out. 
Now, almost, but not quite in a straight line, if you follow this Canton Street that turns into another road, <coughs> you'll see the Dirty Gringo. <coughs> now, why am I bringing this up? Number one, goofy name, got to bring it up. Number two, this is the only way to find Main Street in this area, in this particular part of the state. It's right near the, Cal the Canadian border. Um, make your jokes there. And this is what I'm going to show you first thing by hitting the Google Street View button. Around Ford Avenue and York Avenue, we get a square that includes a tiny piece of Main Street. Main Street is a one-half mile dead-end road. It's not considered priority. And now we have a problem. <coughs> Where along this street is number six Main Street for Ogdenton, New York? I think that's the name of the area, or the name of the, 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 the region. I forgot the name of it already. Uh, but it's the one that'll be in the title for the video. It's a forgettable location. Let's look at it really quickly. Let's guess which end is probably the starting point for when the road was built. Realize that downtown arterial highway has also got a, 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 a state highway name or number. Um, it comes off of Crescent Street, Green Street, and Washington Street combining. It then turns into, oh God, no, it's also named Main Street as well. Yeah, that's a problem. This half mile section here turns all these roads into Main Street again. When you type in Main Street for the area, you don't get it. Also, there's another one that's at a 90 degree angle at another part of this town. And it goes on and on and on. So where's number six Main Street? Well, let's see when it turns from Main Street to, oh, now it's the highway system. So let's see if we get any labeling at all on this street. Does, the, does it stop here? Where, well, here's Ogden Street for Ogdenton. Ogden Street fuses with it. Technically, this little chunk of road here that's completely irrelevant with no name on it could also mix with it. So what street name is it? Okay, let's take our Google Street View little guy, throw him on here, ragdoll style, and see what it calls itself. It's called New York Highway 68. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Yeah, because these roads begin and end and fuse back together again and change name midway, you're going to end up with the, the addresses you look up being very broken up. So we're on Main Street there. Now it says New York 68. That's Google's interpretation. And then it turns into a local street that was added to the interstate highway system in the area. There's King Street. And then finally, the one street that doesn't connect to it, Main Street, it literally isn't connected here, becomes part of it. Let's go to this end of it and see if this is the real Main Street. We can't because it's missing. Someone said that it was completely uh, bleached uh, from the map system. Downtown Arterial Highway. Sounds like a title of a song. So what about the other end of it? Well, it's again, let's turn on Google Street View so we can view it. We are missing it. Except at the point where the dirty gringo happens, we don't have a street. So let's look along here and see if we can figure out the numbers. Again, we're trying to figure out why this ambiguous location might show up as something when you Google something. Again, when you Google lookup or map lookup on Google Street View, it's going to do its best to give you the information, right? Okay, well, that says 73. So that must be where number six Main Street be. It must be down there somewhere. So we hit backwards. Now it says 114. 114. Okay, back it up again. It's still saying 114. Now it says 109, it's going lower again. They go back another notch, another notch. Now it's 168.7. Is it consistently a larger number? Now we're at 200. Continuing, 207. So we're getting some consistency, right? Until we hit Ford Avenue. Okay, well, let's, let's see if we can double check that. Now, I'm going to warn you, if you are looking at a street that has this much crap going on, it's, there's a lot of crap going on in that one and a half mile. Okay. 
But if you're doing that, if you see lots of number changes where it goes up and down to where it can't make sense linearly, that means this is a junction of two sections of town that were joined together from two cities, or it's a city that extended in a way that the downtown or main street wasn't really the main street, so they changed the numbers around, or this is a landfill area that was used, or this is a landfill area, and they added to this, this little town in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use King Street to double check this. We're going to go to this end of King Street and hope that it doesn't duplicate. Does it, it doesn't duplicate, does it? I'm sure it does somewhere. It probably picks up 10 miles away and it's got the same numbering. But anyway, we'll go here. Let's look at, King, look at King Street at this end of the road. We're at the end of it. Again, it's a short road. It's about, about the same length, a little longer. So we're going to jump out here off of King Street. we got number two King Street. We're looking for number six something. Okay, so obviously since that one over there is the other street we're dealing with, this, this must be where we get our King Street. This must be where we get our number six. So let's go forward. And there's, there's Howland Public and Supply owns that. Oh, yeah, that's another address. They could be on King Street. Okay, so we got number six to look for. So we're looking for number six. Go forward. Go forward. Oh, number four. Okay, so number six King Street should be up here. Let's keep going. Maybe it's this vacant lot to the left. I don't know. Number 10. So we skipped past it, so it's somewhere here. So that must be the number number set, number set six, because it's all very linear. Here's number 10. Okay, let's go forward and keep going forward and see. Oh, it went down a number. Okay, well, I'm sure that it won't do anything weird or stupid or, or anything in a second when I go forward just a couple of notches. Oh, yeah, there it is. 98 King Street. Okay, well, it sure wouldn't, you know, do something else weird like go down again or go up and down and up and down and up and down in the number scheme because that would indicate that this is a fractured address scheme. Uh, it went down again. And then, and then, and then it's gone. Um, yeah, so when we look up anything through Google Street View or just Googling it or on Apple or Yahoo Maps or whatever, now it's going to 100 again. I think I've made my point here, so let's just go back to the overhead map and uh, turn off the Google Street View buttons here if I can. When people were trying to find an address they were told about that was on Main Street, number one, that's one Main Street. Then there's another Main Street that isn't really a Main Street, but that's just Google saying it is. And then this road itself has, if you're not aware of it, when I looked up the tax map data, then found the translation to street maps, it has four different number schemes this the, every basically every block has a different number scheme the only place that's somewhat consistent even though it doesn't show up on google street view is the residential area where they do actually use mostly linear addressing from here to here three stinking blocks of consistency and on king street well i'm sure king street's like that let's just go ahead and look now think about this if you lived on this property and wanted to get a package delivered Okay, we're at 622 King Street. Let's see how consistent it is. Now I'm just going to tap for it. When you Google something or look up something and think you found the answer, because someone said, oh, just look it up. Here's the address. No, you never do that. You make somebody give you the GPS coordinates when it comes to street numbers. Numbered street, na numbered street addresses are normally supposed to be very linear. And you may have noticed it freaking isn't if it's got something going on with it. It's only consistent until it isn't. And that's one of the reasons that when people make these references where they just cut and paste the address, or they just tell you vaguely it's on the corner of such and such and such and such, unless you get more than just a little bit of information, they're inviting you to find the wrong answer. It's a common trope, it's done in alternate reality games on the internet, and it's aggravating. It also is unnecessary because you can obviously just send them well, okay, we're here we're at 521 King Street. It's a consistent one. Share and bad image. Boom. That string of numbers and saying it's a Google map with that number on it would work. Just remove the slashes and the dot com. It's not that complicated to give unambiguous information. If someone doesn't give you extremely precise instructions, they're they're jerking you around.